Well, this Tuesday, Tennessee lawmakers will be in Nashville for the start of this year's legislative session. I've got Senator John Lundberg with us this year ahead of the session to discuss some big topics that the session is set to cover. Senator Lundberg, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely great to be here. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. We know that Governor Bill Lee recently announced a proposal to expand school vouchers all yeah. across the state. Again, uh, for our viewers that might not be aware of this, it's set to provide roughly $7,000 to 20,000 students for use for a private or charter school schools um, of their parents' choice. Now, last night, two of the largest districts here in our region, Sullivan and Washington County Schools, both of their boards of education did pass some resolutions opposing this voucher program. Now, tell us, what are your thoughts on that? Why? That, that's what I'd ask them. Mm -hmm. Why, when we're investing in students? That's the most important thing we do. We're not investing in the buildings, we're investing in those students. And so based on the recent letter grades that were sent out by the Department of Education, now some schools in the region, they are doing well, some yeah. are not doing so great. So how would this benefit the students here in our region? Because you say it's going to impact them the most. It's going to impact them. It really benefits the students by the parents being involved and having a role in that decision making process. Question is, shouldn't parents have a role in deciding what's best for their students? And where can they be most effective? They being the students. I think that's really what this brings to the table. Now, private and charter schools don't always have to provide the same things that public schools have to provide, you know, things like transportation. Um, they also might not have to adhere to some of the same rules as public schools. So tell us, do these vouchers really give more access to students and families? I think they really do. And it's not just about, quote, private schools or charter schools, because I would tell you that these are, again, public monies, mm -hmm. and, and it's not, we're investing, we're not investing in the schools, we're investing in those students, and that's the important part here. Um, you know, it may be some on transportation, yeah, if you want to go to a charter school or a private school, you might have to provide transportation, but also if you want to go instead of to the county school to a city school, or from city school to a county school, you might have to provide your own transportation there as well. So for those schools that are going, we oppose this, I'm really questioning why, because I don't want them to be defensive on this. When another option opens up, we have great schools. Why can't our schools grow and attract more students? And let's talk a little bit about what you would maybe say to the people who think this is just a subsidy for families who might be already able to afford a private school. Absolutely not. We have we've have this in a test basis right now in three counties in Tennessee, which are basically Memphis, Nashville, and Chattanooga, those counties. It hasn't been 100% taken advantage of, so is it going to be a game changer in here for every student? No. Will it be a game changer for a number of students? Yes. And that's the point of it. We want those students to succeed. It's like when we talk about third grade reading. Shouldn't we strive to 100% and have every student reading? Shouldn't we be disappointed if only 40% of our students are reading at grade level at third grade? Yeah, we should be disappointed there. And let's talk a little bit about what you would say to those people that might say this program could leave certain kids behind. No, I ask how. And again, we're putting the emphasis here also on parental choice and parental involvement. That's a, that's a key part in education, is making certain parents are involved. And parents having a choice of, you know, my student is gonna be best served here. This school does great at English. This school does great at math, whatever, whatever their needs are. That parental involvement is key because obviously they know their child better than anyone else, even the teachers who are gonna spend a tremendous amount of time with them. And let's talk a little bit about airports. We know that last year the state pushed some legislation to take over the majority of the seats on Nashville's Airport Authority Board. And now mm -hmm. that was ruled un unconstitutional. But could we see some legislation this year to take over other Airport Authority Boards? I've heard about legislation like that mm -hmm. being proposed, so possibly. Uh, you know, I look at Nashville's airport, and the reason I think that was important is a lot of the monies that go into the Nashville airport, and from just the landing fees, obviously, are paid by the airlines, but a lot of the monies that come in come from the state of Tennessee, and no one here in East Tennessee has a voice in that airport board, and we spend millions of dollars. No one in West Tennessee has a voice. Shouldn't we, if we're spending those kind of dollars? Yeah. So what would this look like for the Tri-Cities airport? Again, haven't seen the legislation, so I couldn't tell you, um, but so it could be an appointment by the governor, mm -hmm. by the Speaker of the House or the Senate, um, and I don't even know how many are on the airport board right now here locally anyway. And we also know that abortion is expected to be another big topic again yep. this year. Can we expect any amendments to the law surrounding the current ban? 
you know, I'm sure there will be legislation filed. Here, here's your big surprise. We go back into session at noon Tuesday. There's going to be about 1,700 bills that will be filed over the next three weeks. Anyone, I don't care if you're a Republican or Democrat, who thinks we need 1,700 laws, we don't. So will there be bills on abortion? Absolutely. Will there be bills on guns? Yes. Education? Yes. The judiciary? Yes. And everything else in between. So many things that are going to be coming up in this next week. Well, is there anything else that you want us to be aware of? Well, I want to end on a positive thing. Tennessee goes into the year in a really good position. And you look at that financially and you go, we have a balanced budget. Uh, we have a $2 billion surplus. We have no road debt. We have triple, triple A bond ratings. We're in really good shape. And we've done our, our work to get us to where we are. Well, Senator Lundberg, thank you so much for joining us here on First at Four. I'm sure we'll be in touch throughout the session. And again, thanks for coming on today. We appreciate you. Thank you.